All right, I want to look for one specific setup that just comes up over and over again, and it's really, really neat because it allows us to have smaller uh, stops versus the amount of reward to risk. The reward to risk in this trade is quite impressive because what happens is we, we, we have four setups, for example. Let's just go through this, and then we'll go over today's action and look at some price action. We have the first trade, which we sent out the charts yesterday. We had a lot of first wave trades. It was a first wave trade market yesterday. Just a lot of first wave targets hit. We had a couple over 10 pointers on the first wave trade. The second one, and the second and third doesn't have to be any particular order, but then that's the Momo setup. And the third is the FZR or the, uh, or the slingshot. FZR, aka slingshot. So those are our three trend waves. So we always look for trend with the overall zone on the zone. So those are our three big trend waves we look for every single week. For example, this is a slingshot with trend because it's with it's with the zone. This is a slingshot trade, right? We get the oscillator coming up through 80, down through the 20, 80 per se. You can even let it go up, up through 80, come back down through 20, and get that nice little ride down if we get into the wave. Then we get the shallow wave over here. This is another uh, slingshot. It comes up through 80, down through that uh, 40 threshold, uh, 20 threshold, another slingshot right there. So those are trend waves, right? Trend waves. What happens, we have, the, so these are trend with trend, because we don't like to counter trend trade the market, right? Trend waves. But what, I'm getting a lot of feedback after producing the PDF. A lot of traders trade a lot of different markets, whether it be futures, currency, forex, you know, even stocks, even ETFs. Uh, uh, a lot of traders don't just trade the, the S&P. So we, we get, um, and I know news just came out, so I'm going to pop this back over here in about three minutes so we can start looking for setups. But this is uh, a set, this, th these are trend waves, right? The other, the other setup we have, we have one setup called the, the, what's called a failure trade. This is one of my, becoming one of my favorite trades in the zones, and I'll tell you why. The failure trade, the reward to risk on it, is quite impressive because what it does, if you get into the zone and you get a weak signal line or a strong signal line, this market tends to explode in that direction. So this is a failure trade we're going to concentrate on today. So these are our trend waves that we concentrate on every day. Like I said, we had a lot of first waves yesterday. We had, what, five or six in a row yesterday. So those are trend waves. A failure trade would be number four. Okay, so number four would be failure. And this is a corrective wave. Get this smaller. A corrective wave is against zone trend. I'm gonna tell you how to time it though. And it works really well when you get into the zone and it fails. And I'll show you how we time it. Goodness gracious here. Hold on one sec. So we're going to concentrate today on this video on failure trade. And then we'll get back to live price action here. All right, that's four is a failure trade. What a failure trade is, is not a trend. It's not a trend. It's a corrective trade. It's a corrective wave. What a failure trade is this. So these are two trend trades with zone trend, right? Our zone like to, re they, they'd love to reverse the market. Love to reverse the market. Come into the zone, get a slingshot. You get above 80, down through 20 again, above through 80, down through 20. Get that nice little trend move. Or, the, or the, even the Momo trade. Love these trend trades, right? They're, they're, they're quite impressive. But there's a failure trade. What a failure trade says is this. When we get into the zone, into the zone, especially when we get to the outer zone particularly, right, we're looking for what? We're looking for an FZR slingshot. What happens when the oscillator, the signal line, does not go below, above 80, and back below this 40 threshold or below 20? See how, how it stops and reverses right back up? Well, you can spot this for a failure trade, and the reward to risk are, are, are really, really cool in these trades. Because if you look, here's, here's, my, uh, here's my parameters for this. I look at the large signal line. 
my thick signal line down here, not, not my thin. The thin is for slingshots, right? We use this thin line for slingshots, slingshot. Our thicker signal line we use for failure trades. Now, failure trades are this. We come into the outer zone, but our oscillator, meaning our signal line, stays in above 80 if it's on the outer red zone. I think even in the shallow, and these work well, but I like them in the outer zone. So what happens is, is if we get into an outer zone, we're looking for the slingshot, but it never develops. It never gets below 20 or 40 threshold down here to pull us in on an FZR, right? The FZR slingshot, that, that's these trades over here. See how the oscillator gets below the 20 threshold, 20 threshold, above 80, below 20. So what you do is, is you can spot these trades that come up on a week to week to week to week basis if they're in the outer zone. So like I said, they can be in the shallow zone if you want, but the outer zone, they work really, really well. So once you get to the outer zone, all right, you're looking for the red bar reversal for the AKA slingshot right there. There's your red bar reversal. We don't get in when it, when it gets in with a red bar reversal. We need this oscillator to punch through from 80 down through 20. So when we get that, if we don't get that, and that large signal line stays above, and you need to pay attention, you really need to pay attention on this setup. You can do, you can do very, very well with this setup just by itself. If you are above 80 on this slingshot, and that slingshot, so the slingshot comes into the outer zone, it doesn't get pulled in, but your oscillator, your large signal line stays above 80, and I get a green reversal bar, that's your entry. And this is a corrective wave right there, and the market explodes to the upside. Some of these are really, really big in duration. We come down to the lower zone. Again, we're looking for a, a slingshot or a trend trade. So here's that 80 threshold I keep talking about. A lot of traders like to go from 20 to 80, 80 to 20, gets below 20, never breaks 80, gets close to above, I mean, gets just above 65, but... If you really want to make sure you're into a slingshot, you can go from 20, 80, 80 to 20. Never breaks 80, but look what happens. My oscillator, my larger signal line, stays below the 40 threshold. Now, your best failure trades will be above 80 or be above, below 20. Those are really high probability failure trades. But they're allowed to go down to 65 per rise and allowed to go up to 40 for sales. So this stays below 40, and this catches this early trend before it even starts, right there. Right the red reversal bar, because it's a failure, and the market just gets crumbled to the downside, right? So failure trades are really, really neat. Now, if it's gonna be, if it's going to be a slingshot trade, right? A slingshot, it's gonna come through 80 down through 20, right? So. When, when, you, when you watch these happen and develop, they're, they're quite easy to see. So let's look at, uh, uh, here's one here. Um, you come down, you roll back up, look at your larger signal line, staying below that 40 threshold, really big move on a failure trade. So these failure trades are not small. We had one this morning also. This morning, if we saw the, so that's one this morning that happened this morning. So when you see these failures come in, watch your oscillator below. If it's above, at least below 40 for sales or above for buys, you got yourself a nice setup. Here's a failure trade right here. Here's a failure trade because I get to my zone. I'm looking for a slingshot to go below 20 at the zone and get this above 80 per se. Does not, it even stays below 65 really weak. And I get a red reversal bar. That's a failure trade. These are not small moves. This is 35 down to 20. That's a 15 S&P point moves. What I'm finding is these failure trades are moving 10, 15, 20 points sometimes. This is, you know, these, these failure trades tend to work out quite well. And it's at, the, it's at the zone when you're at the zone. So, but see, this is not a failure trade because you're at the outer zone, right? But you get a slingshot. It goes down through 20, up through 80, down through 20. So that's a slingshot trade. 
uh, but an, uh, I'm sorry, not a failure trade because this um, this oscillator, long-term oscillator, was not below at least 40. So you wouldn't take that one. So you want to see if you're in a stronger or weaker position. Here's a perfect failure trade. God, this is beautiful. So right here, you come down into the zone. You're looking for a reversal, right? So you come up through 80 for the slingshot, FZR slingshot. You're coming down. We don't break the 40 threshold or the or the 20 threshold. Remember, slingshots, you want to go up, and you want to come back down through that small signal line, come down through that 20 or 80 to pull in. But what happens? My larger signal line, which is the best setup you're going to get. This is the best failure trade setup you're going to get when you're above 80 or below 20, and it gets it right there. It catches it right at the green reversal bar. Look at my oscillator stay above 80, and that market explodes. 16 three quarters all the way up to 40. I mean, you're talking about what, almost a 24-point S&P point move. Like I said, these are not small by duration. Here's another, sling, here's another failure trade. Failure trade's a tweezer. Our oscillator's peg below 20. This is not, looks like a small move, but it's a good move. 14 and a half, all the way down to 05, almost a 10-point S&P point move. So these failure trades are really neat trades when you're on the outer zone. Here's a failure trade right here. Here's a big, direct, a big reward to risk move. You come down to the zone. My oscillator stays in a weak position. My larger, the key is larger signal line. This is in the PDF indicator book. The larger signal line stays below 20. I get a tweezer, two double dojis. That's a short. Market moves 37 all the way down to 10. 27 point move on the S&P. You're starting to get the handle on this, how against this zone, it likes to fire. There's another trend that I just pointed out. That's one. Here's another big one right before that. There it is again. We come down to the, once it hits that outer zone, price action starts getting weak. I'm watching the signal line. I have to at least stay below my 40 threshold for a sell. Or I got to stay at least above 65 for a buy. My best are above 80, below 20. In fact, if you just wanted to concentrate on the failure trade and the motive wave, I mean, the uh, the first wave, you could by themselves. Those, those are really two trades that come up over and over and over and over again. So there is your sell. There's your red reversal bar. There's the low of 79. It got as low as, what, almost 30 S&P points on that move. You're starting to get it. There's a failure on that one. There's a failure on this one. It's got to get into the zone, though. Here's another failure trade. Failure trade here. This is a little small little guy. But you get my point. That's a failure trade. I come to the outer zone. My oscillator stays above 80. That's my best signal. And what looks like a small trade turns out to be a decent one. 87 all the way up to, what, 93. So almost six, seven S&P points. Here's another failure trade at the top. Look at the huge brisk down move that it has. I'm telling you, these are high reward to risk trades. That was uh, 4,600 potential all the way down to the demand line. And that was a 28 S&P point move. Why? Look at the oscillator stay below 40 threshold on that lower high. Market gets cranked to the downside. So with these failure trades when they when they come into the outer zone right watch for that oscillator to hold here's another failure trade on the and it usually happens after you get the first wave right you get a first wave you get a second wave and typically then you get a failure trade another failure trade oscillators below 40 market gets cranked to the downside you're starting to see the rhythm of this here's another failure trade right at the threshold So right when you get to that zone, here's another failure trade, beautiful failure trade here. You come up into the zone. This is after multiple tests of the zone. What I'm finding is the zone, after you get your first wave, you know, you get all these waves down, uh, slingshot, 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 Momo, Momo, Momo. It even works on hard trend days. Momo, big trades to the downside, and then it catches the failure trade right there. Oscillator stays above 80. That's my best trade into the zone I get a red reversal bar right back to a green that's my failure market has potential from 64 and a half 
as high as 83, almost 20 S&P points. These are not small guys by nature. They like to really crank on the failure trades. So here's a failure trade here, really big move. Your oscillator gets above minimum 65, reversal, and we get a huge move to the upside of 88 all the way up. I mean, this was just cranking to 34. So a just really nice move. Here's another failure trade, outer zone. Like I said, these are not small moves, guys. So your first waves, so I call these waves uh, home run waves on failure trades. We have our first, we have our first wave trade, which is singles, sometimes doubles, right? Our first wave. We had a first wave. So this morning we had a first wave right here. That's a single. This is a first wave trade. We had, we had five or six of those in a row yesterday where you get a trend change and you get that first wave down and the sell was right there at uh, what 24 and a quarter and it got as low as 14 so that's 10 S&P points on the first wave but these are single trades right it's looking for a first wave now again so these are single trades which I'll have in the PDF we bet singles on the first wave right so that just happened in the market on the first wave but these failure trades they're there typically could be home run trades, 10, 15, 20, 30 S&P points potential. But I'm seeing it not on the first wave trades happen on the 13 chart, right? On the 112.12 12 or the 113.13, they happen here. They're happening on the smaller Rinko. I'm finding the ones that work well for the failure trades don't happen on the small Rinko. They happen on my large Renko, which is the 12020. So I'm looking for failure trades off large Renko sizes. It works dynamically with really well with the NASDAQ futures also on the 20 or 25 Renko. Even works on the 30, 35 Renko on the NASDAQ futures. If you look, just look for failure trades and then motive trades, I mean, uh, not motive trades, but um, uh, first wave trades on the NASDAQ, you do, you have a lot of signals during the day. Those, those two setups alone. But you can see when it fail, you get this failure trade, these are not small moves, not small moves, right? So as you watch price action today, let's look for the failure trades because the failure trades are right here. Here's one set up right here, right after news at 8.33. The oscillator, the big signal line is in a weak position, got into weak position below 40. And then we got that big crank down to the downside. And then we got the first wave trade over here. So what you can do is this then. We got our first wave, which is this on here. I, I have this strategy in the um, PDF that I'm getting out to you guys. I'll have this finished. Like I said, I'll have it finished to you this week. I try to get it done by today. I still want to add some charts from today's price action. So Gerald's going to be putting that on our landing page on the strategy PDF. All right. But this is a, so this is a first wave trade, right? On the on the 112 or 113. This is a first wave trade. And I have these settings out to you in the strategy PDF on the members download page. But you get a trend change and then you get this move down. That's 10 points. Then we just have one here live now at 4533, right? And got as high as what 36 and a half so far. But these are first wave trades on a smaller Renko, which is over here. This is our smaller Renko chart. So here's our first wave trade. We get a trend change. There's your double tweeze right below the demand. And there's our arrow that fired there also. So these are first wave trades on the smaller Renko 112 or 113. So you want to look for the first wave trade specifically, specifically on the 113. But you want to look for your failure, failure trades specifically on the 12020 because these are larger in duration. So when we when you're going to see these happen on a week to week to week to week to week to week to basis. Now I want you to I, I want you to watch for this. When you see these trades, announce them in the room and, and put down the potential ticks. Or I'll show you on a week to week basis. Every single week, I'm going to point out. Two particular trades that happen over and over again. The first wave trade and the failure trade happen over and over and over again. 
The slingshots, same thing with trend. They happen beautiful in trend markets. The great thing with the failure trades and the first wave trades, it don't matter if you're in chop or trend. They both work. This is a chop market this morning. Chop, 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 chop. They both work in trend and chop both. Okay, so they both work in trend and chop, first wave and failure trades. So, but I wanted to go over a video to show you how you can get high reward to risk trades on the failure trades. These are not small moves. This one this morning at 833 was 4529 all the way down to 14. 15 S&P point potential on that move. So these are home run trades potentially, failure trades on the 120, where the, the first wave trades after the news came out, I know this is a 10 point potential, but typically, you know, these are smaller in duration on the first wave trades, but still nice trade, especially with news. We got a nice trade there. Like I said, the potential this morning after news on unemployment, 45.24, as low as 45.14, almost 10 S&P points on a first wave sell. And then we, and, I, and this is in the PDF I have coming out to you guys, okay? Like I said, I'm going to add today's charts. We'll get on the landing page by the end of the week. I want to do it today, but I've got a lot of charts I want to add uh, in on the first wave so um, and show you how to do it with the strategy. So this is a first wave that's working now, 33, the high potential of 37. So let's recap before I shut this video off. The first wave, because if you do want to run this on the indicator and use chart trader, you can adjust your trailing stops according to a home run hitter here on the failure trades and more of a let's bat singles and doubles over here on the first wave trade all right and then in the PDF what I'll do is I'll make sure I add this in the strategy if you do want a strategy in that we'll add this in as far as that goes uh, on, on the on the PDF